I don't know about tomorrow. Many things about the future I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds the future. And I know who holds my hand. Hey, this is Pastor Don Neese with God to You Ministries, taking God's Word and sharing it with you. And we started off this ministry with why I'm such a staunch King James Bible believer. And I believe that God's words are preserved in a King James Bible and in a King James Bible only. And so uh, I believe that that's what God has done. I believe it's the Bible that English-speaking people ought to be using. That would put us all on the same page. As a matter of fact, you realize about 70 years ago, if you attend a, an older church here in America, and um, uh, that church has been around for, I don't know, 75, 80 years, uh, do you realize that your former pastors were all King James Bible believers? They believed in the King James Bible. They, they would hold up a King James Bible, and they would say, this is the Word of God. And uh, they, they, would, they, would, they emphatically were King James dogmatic Bible believers because that's all they had. And uh, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't question it. They didn't go back. They didn't correct the Bible with a lot of Greek and Hebrew and uh, a lot of scholarly stuff. They just believed the Bible. So if you go back very far, what you're going to find is we were all on the same page. It didn't matter if you were uh, Pentecostal, Baptist, um, if, if, if you were Lutheran, um, if, if you were uh, Episcopalian, it, 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 it didn't matter if you were Methodist or Presbyterian. You go back 75, 80 years ago, and we all had the same Bible. And uh, matter of fact, you didn't, you didn't even come out with uh, until the, the turn of the, about the turn of the 20th century. Uh, there was a couple of men by the name of last names of Westcott and Hort, and they were scholars. They were not Christians from what I can find. They were scholars. And they were the ones that gave us the Revised Standard Version. Of course, they used a different set of manuscripts than the King James translators used. So uh, one of the things I want to tell you that the Bible says uh, that, uh, about the Lord Jesus, and I believe the Bible, this King James Bible, I, I believe it, it represents and portrays Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ as King, Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ as Savior, Jesus Christ as God, Jesus Christ as the Son of God, Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace, and, and his titles and his, his name names just go on and on. And so, as a matter of fact, in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, he's talking about the Lord Jesus. It simply says, in the volume of the book is it written of me. Of course, he's quoting from the book of Psalms. In the volume of the book is it written of me. The volume of the Bible is Jesus Christ. That's what this book's about, the whole book. As a matter of fact, I, I'm, I teach a teenage Sunday school class uh, at the church where I pastor at Grace Valley Baptist Church. And, and last Sunday, I was talking to our, our, my young people, young adults, and I was talking to them about, uh, about, about the, the book of Genesis and even in the first few days of creation, how much, really all seven days, how much you can see Jesus in those pages. And the Bible says this, that all things uh, consist by him and the whole world is held together by the word of his power. The words of this book are are perfect words. The translation is a perfect translation. I find no errors in it. I find no problems with it. I believe it is God's final authority for, for our life. Now, here, here's what I can do, and here's what, if you attend an older church in this, in, in, in this country, here's what the old pastors used to say. This is the Word of God. You can bank on it. You can build on it. You can bank your family on it. It is the Word of God. It is sure and solid. Now, I can hold this Bible up. This is the King James Bible. I can hold it up, and I have no doubt in my mind that this is the Word of God, that these words are the preserved words of God. I have no doubt of that. I, I believe it to be right over all of the Bibles that exist anywhere. I believe it to be right. I believe the others to be an error, and I believe this one is not. I am emphatically, dogmatically, a King James Bible believer. So whatever, whatever truth there is for me, this is it. And I believe for God, this is it.
I don't believe it has any error. I don't believe there's any wrongs in it. I believe it's exactly the way God wanted it to be. Now, for those of you that use other Bible versions, can you, do you believe your Bible version that much? See, I'm, I'm, banking, I'm banking everything I believe on the authority of this book. Would, would you do that on yours? Would you believe your Bible? I believe this Bible over the Greek and over the Hebrew. I believe it. O over the Greek and over the, the Hebrew. I believe God's touched it just that much. I believe this is what God has for English-speaking people. Now, do you believe in your Bible that much? Or do you believe your Bible is just a version, just a translation? I don't believe the King James Bible is just another version, nor is it just another translation. Now, remember what Jesus said. In the volume of the book is it written of me. And I believe this. I believe, and I realize you, don't, you, you may not believe this. You don't have to. If you could gather up the words the jots and the tittles, every word that's in this King James Bible, and you could throw it out there, and it became a person, it would become the person of Jesus Christ. And he would be perfect, and he would be whole. That's what it means. In the volume of the book is it written of me. So this book is literally Jesus Christ in word form. Now, when I say that, that this book is not Christ, okay, but if you could take him and put him in word form, this would be him. And if you could take these words, because his name is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, John said in first, uh, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you could just put it out there, and it became a person. It would become the person of Jesus Christ. No other Bible would do that. When you have a life, any kind of life, and, and that life needs truth. And I think today, more than ever, this world needs truth. Young married couples need truth. Emphatic, dogmatic truth. People need to realize that, that black is black, white is white, men are men, women are women, a male is a male, a female is a female, the way God made them, there are some emphatic truths that cannot be changed. No matter how much you say they're changed, they cannot be changed. And so in, in everything in life, you need a final authority, a foundation that you build everything on. For me, that's this King James Bible. It is my final authority. When it disagrees with me, I'm wrong and it's right. When it disagrees with you, you're wrong and it's right. When it disagrees the law of the land, this is right, the law of the land is wrong. When this disagrees with the government, this is right, and the government is wrong. When this disagrees with my parents, or my wife, or my children, or anything in life, our church, our doctrine, this is always right, and those things are always wrong. This is, this is the final authority. This King James Bible was put here by the King of England. We went over that previously in some of our former videos. There was an old saying years ago that the sun never sets on the British Empire, and that was true. The British Empire spread all over the world and has influenced the world for hundreds of years. It probably has influenced the world more than any other empire there has ever been, the British Empire. When I started flying, I was going to, through flight school, I thought it was fascinating. They, they taught us about, you know, we had to learn how to land at an international airport. Now, you don't want to do that in a small plane, but you had to learn how to do it. And one of the things I found out was this, that um, if, if you're going to fly in, from, no matter where you're from, if you're going to fly into an international airport, you have to learn how to speak English. You have to speak English because English is the international language of the world, English, which came from England, which is a part of the British Empire, which means this, the, the known language that has influenced the world more than any other language there is, is the English language. Now, God chose to preserve his word in an English Bible because he knew the English language would become the international language of the world. God's way ahead of us. 
He didn't choose the American Standard Version Bible, didn't choose the Revised Standard Version Bible. Um, and I'm not English. I'm American. I'm Southern American, if you can't tell. And so, and so God chose the English God chose the, the English language because the English language would become the international language of the world. So, so it's, it's, it's not that I think the English language above all other languages, it's just that that's the one that God chose. So England, England holds so much. For example, right now it is, this is actually uh, Friday, um, February the 24th, 4.21 p.m. in the afternoon. Now, that, that, that's pretty right. I think that's, I think that's pretty close to being right. Do you know where the world gets its time from? England. All clocks in the world are set by English time. That's where it starts at, English time. You don't know where you're at in time without England. We don't, not by American time, not by Chinese time, not by Russian time, not by African time, by the time of England, by British time. You don't know where you're at if it wasn't for England. You wouldn't know what time it was if it wasn't for England. Big Ben sets the time for everywhere in the world. Isn't that amazing? So, so you don't know where you're at in time uh, without English time. Did you know that it's fascinating that if you're going to give your, you know, the whole world is broke up in longitude and latitude, and if you're going to give somebody, say you're out in the Gulf of Mexico and you're lost and you want somebody to know where you're at, all you're going to have to do is tell them your latitude and longitude. Do you know where that starts at? Do you know where the zero line starts at? England. You can't have a longitude and latitude Without, without having a reference. Every time you give your longitude and latitude, you're giving a reference to England. Isn't that amazing? So you don't know where you're at in time without England. You don't know where you're at on the planet without a reference to England. Now stop and think about this just a minute. You don't know where you're at physically. You don't know where you're at in time. And God is trying to tell the world you really don't know where you're at spiritually without a reference to England. And God chose English translators and the king of England, which would become the British Empire, to preserve his word. England is the reference point for everything. And God has chosen this English Bible to do that in. I'm going to give you an example of something that's happened. And, and I always... Um, in every God to You video, I, I, I emphasize the words, how important the words are, and then the curses that God gives to people if they add to or they take away the words in this prophecy. A little bit later on, I'm, I'm going to share with you why. I mean, I have, I have a direction that we're going. We're going to get there in, in the next couple of videos. We're going to get to where this whole thing is really going. But today, the, the, big, the big Bible today, everybody is pushing, pushing. The Southern Baptist Convention started pushing the English Standard Version. They ran into some problems with the Bible they were using, which was a new international version Bible. They ran into some serious issues with that Bible. And so the Southern Baptist Convention began to push for a different version. They came up with the English Standard Version. It's interesting. It's, it's troubling. It's baffling. We had something perfect. I still have something perfect. Uh, Christianity today had, had and has a perfect Bible. For some reason, people don't want to go back to it. That, that would be called repentance, that we left, we left God's preserved word for something different. I don't understand that. I really don't. But so, so they came out with this English Standard Version, and now that's the Bible version that everybody's pushing. Did you know the English Standard Version removed words from the Bible? Words. What did God say about if you take away from the words of this prophecy? If you remove the words, heaven and, earth shall pass, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. As a matter of fact, the English Standard Version, the, the most popular Bible version today that's being pushed by so many different denominations, didn't just remove a few words. They removed 30,819 words. 30,819 words. 
Now, if we were to take the English Standard Version Bible, like I was talking about this King James Bible, and we were to gather up those words and throw them out there, become the, the person of Christ. I really believe that. If you could do that, that's what it would make. So let's, say, let, let's do that with an English Standard Version, just for example. Well, now his face is missing, or his head is missing. 30,819 words, his, his legs are missing. They're going to be parts of Jesus. He's not going to be complete. In other words, some of it's going to be right, but some of it's going to be wrong. Hmm. Let's take this cup of coffee right here. Let's just, let's just say this, this cup of coffee is a great cup of coffee. Just, just coffee and water. But let's add something to it. Let, let's just take maybe a little bit of cyanide, just a little bit. N not enough where I can even taste it, just a little bit of cyanide and pour it in this cup. Is it still good? Still, it's just, it's the same coffee, but now to kill you. You see things that are different, not the same. Old Curtis Hudson was right. And, and then not only that, not only that, let's, let's take some of it away. Let's start to, well, how much of it are we going to take away before there's nothing left? And that's what's happening. We keep adding to the Bible, and we keep taking away until we have reached a day that we have completely changed its meaning. Now, every generation, every, every generation, really more than every generation, for the last several years, every five years, we come out with a new Bible version, and it's changed the Bible a little bit. And, you know, now we've come to a place that's downright scary because they have changed the Godhead so much that we now have Bible versions you can't even tell who God is. If you enjoyed the King James Bible and where the King James Bible comes from and you'd like to see more, please watch our next video. And as far as today goes, like our video, subscribe to our channel, and please ring the bell.